I already know that tallying up the exact amount of times we find out something new about Cory and Topanga's childhood that just does not make sense continuity-wise is going to be my absolute favorite part of this video. Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So I think without a doubt this has to be one of the most ambitious videos I have ever made to date. For those of you who may not know, I have a series on my channel where I go over and recap and analyze some storylines of my favorite ships. Or I guess I can't use the word favorite anymore since we talked about Maddie and Diggy last time. And a popular ship that has been requested ever since I started this series a year ago is Cory and Topanga. And so when I was doing my Boy Meets World rewatch recently, I just decided to take note of every single thing that happened between Cory and Topanga so that I could one day make a video about them, and I guess that day is today. And just to keep the record straight before we jump right into it, I just wanted to say that I am a huge Boy Meets World fan and I do love Cory and Topanga, but I am also just acutely aware of how toxic this ship is. I'm also only going to be going off of Boy Meets World, not Girl Meets World, because I personally feel like the spinoff kind of forgot that these two were even a couple to begin with. Like, I I can't even think of one plotline that revolved around them and their relationship, and also we've got enough ground to cover with the original series as it is. But I believe that is all I have to preface today, so with all that being said, let's jump right into this very long love story. So we first meet Topanga in episode 4, she is another student in their class and is paired up with Cory for an upcoming project. Cory immediately objects to this as he thinks that she is quote unquote totally strange, but the episode goes on with the two of them working together and we get that iconic kitchen moment where she does the lipstick interpretive dance. And then we have my personal favorite moment of their first episode together in which Topanga makes this comment about his hat. Except for your red hat. Hey, I got that on cat night. I had to wait an hour in line. Well, if it's important to you, then it's beautiful. They then go on to develop a friendship in this episode with Topanga inviting Cory into her friend group once he's getting made fun of in his and him helping her with her petition. Then the episode ends on quite the memorable note as the two end up sharing their first kiss with one another. You're not gonna like kiss me now, are you? <laughs> Would it be your first kiss? Hey, don't come near me. <laughs> Because it would be interesting if all your life you remembered that your first kiss happened when you thought you looked weird, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't be interesting. Get away! <laughs> because then you'd know it's not what you look like on the outside that matters. It's what kind of person you are. You shouldn't kiss somebody you're not married to. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I would have to feel I really knew the person and that I liked him. Good. Good. I don't know, I could just be overanalyzing this and I understand that the two were very young and times were different, but just part of me feels like the fact that this was their first kiss and it was kind of unconsensual just makes me a little bit uncomfortable. He's literally chained up to a locker, can't leave, says no numerous times, and she still goes on to do it anyways, which just bugs me. And I just can't help but wonder if the roles were reversed, if people would care more about it, because I feel like I've never heard anyone criticize this scene before for that, when it's literally the only thing I can think about every time I watch it. Moving on though, the first season continues with Topanga appearing in various episodes and Cory continuing to make comments about her being weird. Things take a turn, however, in episode 14 when Topanga meets and starts to catch feelings for another Matthews boy, Cory's older brother, Eric. This leads to Topanga coming over to Cory's house more often and unprompted, which results in Sean teasing Cory for her having a crush on him, which he obviously reacts negatively to. Because as we all know, Topanga is different and weird, which means Cory can't like her. A couple episodes later, Cory and Topanga get paired up together as mother and father for an assignment, which again, Cory is unhappy about. But I would argue that things first start to take a change for Cory in episode 19 once he sees Topanga in a swimsuit for the first time. What's the matter? No funny remarks? Uh, you got anything? I got nothing. As you can see, Cory and Sean were basically speechless in reaction to seeing Topanga in this way for the first time. Which, like, I know that they're kids and they're discovering things for the first time and whatnot, and it's a pretty realistic scene, but I'm just like, watching it back just makes me so uncomfortable, and so I apologize that you all had to watch that again as well. But this ends up bringing us to the end of season one, where things really start to take a turn. Episode 21 is all about puberty and hormones, and Sean is starting to show interest in girls and dating, which is leaving Cory to feel a little bit left out and behind. This prompts Minkus to give him the advice to just ask out the first thing he he sees an address. So I'll just meet you at 4.30. Okay, it's a date. A date? Who said anything about a date? 
What have I done? So as you can tell by the clip, Corey immediately regrets this decision, and then after a talk with his parents, he realizes that he's just not ready to date yet. He decides to give Topanga a call and cancel, but instead of being honest, he decides to lie, saying that he's sick and can't go on their date. This leads to one of my favorite baby Corpanga moments, and probably everyone else's as well, because then you have Topanga coming over with tea for him, and then he confesses what really happened, and they play an adorable game of sock basketball together. <laughs> and I just feel like this is such a sweet moment that shows what dating should be like, especially at that age. You have the two of them just genuinely enjoying spending time together, Corey showing Topanga one of his interests, and then her giving him some advice afterwards. It's just so adorable, and I'd personally argue with one of the best moments between the two of them in the entire series. But now that we're ending season one, we're also going to end this chapter as things are just so different in the following season that we're gonna need that separation. So on to chapter two. All right, so starting off with season two, episode one, Sean is pleasantly surprised to see how much Topanga has changed over the summer, and Corey seems to agree with him. In the following episode, Corey is feeling a little left out after everyone starts coupling up with one another, so basically the same plotline that we just saw a few episodes ago. This brings him to ask Topanga out for real this time, in which she politely declines. Oh, come on, work with me here. Corey, when guys and girls go out, first they fall passionately in love. Then after a week, they hate each other. So for one great passionate week, we'd lose a friendship that could last a lifetime. I mean, if you are. <laughs> Corey, don't worry. I'm sure there's someone out there for you. Moving on, we have the Halloween episode in which Corey thinks that he's becoming a werewolf and then when he realizes that he's not, he ends up kissing Topanga in excitement. So I guess this would classify as their second kiss, but more importantly, this is where we find out that the two have apparently known each other since they were three. And so the inconsistencies of the Corey and Topanga origin story is born. No, I see Corey, the same Corey I've known since I was three. In the next episode, things get serious as Mr. Turner assigns a project on love, sex, and slander in relation to the Shakespeare play, Much Ado About Nothing. Corey and Topanga end up getting paired up for this project together, which has them interviewing students at their school to get their thoughts on love, sex, and slander to make a sort of documentary movie about it. Chaos then begins to unfold once the two accidentally fall asleep together at school while they're up late one night editing, which results in the whole school thinking that they slept together and spreading that rumor around. As I'm sure you can imagine, Corey ends up getting praised by his peers, whereas Topanga doesn't receive the same treatment. And while Corey ends up denying anything happening when he was confronted by Sean about it, he does not react the same way when Harley asks him and he ends up encouraging the narrative. This brings Topanga to show up at the Matthews house and explain to Corey how all of this has negatively impacted her, which results in Corey doing the right thing and setting the record straight in their presentation. <sighs> okay, cut it, Sean. Stop the camera, Sean. <laughs> okay, now tell her how much you love her. Shut up, I do not. Then why would you do this for if you don't love her? Because she's my friend. All right, will you stop the camera, Sean? Sean! And so obviously my personal favorite part about all of that was Sean's interjecting at the end there because like adorable, but I do also genuinely believe that even if Corey did just like her as a friend that he would still do that for her anyways. Moving on to the following episode, we find out that Corey has apparently always asked Topanga to things ever since they were little, even though we just went over an entire season in which for the most part, he had no interest in her or if anything, disinterest in her. I'm not going to this dance with anybody. Why don't you just ask Topanga? I could, I could, but that would show no personal growth if I simply asked the girl I've always asked ever since we were five. So when are you gonna ask her? I figure tomorrow. But this episode is all about this dance that they have coming up, and once Topanga gets asked to go by another boy, she says that she has to double check with Corey first, which is interesting considering a couple episodes prior he asked her out and she said no and that she'd rather remain friends, but still a nice gesture on her part nonetheless. But the end of this episode is worth noting as Topanga tells Corey that he looked cute when he was up on stage and they end up sharing a nice moment together. Continuing with their will they won't they plotline, in the next episode they get placed in the closet together for a game of seven minutes in heaven. And while Topanga seems ready to kiss Corey, considering they already have twice at this point, Corey doesn't feel the same way yet. They end up spending their time together talking instead, and when the moment comes where Corey does feel ready to kiss her, the closet door opens, meaning their time is up. The episode continues with the two of them going on a date to a poetry reading together, in which we get this really adorable conversation between the two of them explaining how they were feeling in the closet. Yeah, but you girls have it so easy. You just have to stand there and wait to be kissed. Oh, please. We mean, oh, please. Speaking as a girl, we don't know what we're doing either. Does anybody else know about this? You're the first person I've told. 
So, in the closet, if I had kissed you wrong... I wouldn't have known. I was worried about where my hands would go. Oh, I could have helped you with that. And then the vibes are just so immaculate at this reading that the two of them end up making out. After this event, however, we just don't really get much development between the two of them in the second half of the season, and so that does wrap up this chapter. So, on to chapter three. And so now we're in the era in which the two's feelings for one another really come to light. In episode 18, Cory gets mono and Topanga gets upset with him, asking who he's kissed to give him mono. Topanga ends up conducting this whole investigation to find out who gave it to him, resulting in her finding out that it was from this guy who sneezed on him one time. This leads to Cory saying that it actually happened when he was kissing another girl to get a reaction out of Topanga, resulting in this confession from her. You only say that because you like me. Oh, you think so, huh? Yeah, I do. And you like me? Only if you tell me if you like me. Why should I tell you that? Because if you tell me how you feel about me, then I'll tell you how I feel about you. Okay. Okay, I like you. You know I like you. Now you like me or what? Okay, the way I feel about you. Come closer. The way I feel about you is... is... In episode 21, Sean realizes that Topanga likes Cory, and there's this cute moment where he teases her about it. But the highlight of this episode is definitely the ending, and it's a pretty iconic moment, so I'll just play it for you all. Uh, I need a quote to go with your picture, unless you still want to go with Ra. Well, what would you put for you? I do my thing, and you do your thing. You are you, and I am I. And if in the end we end up together, it's beautiful. Put the same for me. So it's a new year and we start off with Cory telling Sean that he has decided that he is going to ask Topanga to be his girlfriend. And just the way he talks about her in this episode just feels so different in comparison to the previous season in which I personally feel like he was only interested in her because she was always there, almost like she was the easy option to fall back on. Whatever, Cory, why are you hiding? No, I I'm not hiding. It's just, look at her, Sean. I mean, look at Topanga. I thought I missed her over the summer, but I miss her even more in person. Oh, she's pretty. Well, come on, Corey. Just go up to her and say hi. You've known her your whole life. Yeah, but that's not the Topanga I've known. I mean, it's like she goes away for a summer and comes back a woman. He continues to fumble throughout the episode, which results in Sean asking her out instead in this, like, strange attempt to help Corey get his act together. Unfortunately, this, along with some bad advice from Eric, ends up with Corey taking her best friend to the movies instead, complicating things further, when he should have just talked to her about it to begin with. But that's less fun, and we needed to learn a lesson, and so he did not end up doing that, but things do all end up working out in the end when we get this nice moment where he asks her to be his girlfriend. Corey, would you just talk to me? I can't! Don't you think I want to? I mean, in my head, this is so easy. I've said it all summer long, a million times. Said what? I can't say it now, here, with all these <laughs> empty chairs around. Corey, it's just you and me. We've known each other our whole lives. We've always been able to talk. That's what's making this so hard now. It doesn't have to be. Look, Topanga. If I had to dream up the perfect woman, she wouldn't even come close to you. Would you be my girlfriend? Two episodes later, Corey decides that he's in love with her, and when he tells her this, she panics and breaks up with him instead of communicating how she's actually feeling. This brings Corey to break into her room and ask for answers, which also prompts another When We Were Kids story time. Do you remember the time when we were in my backyard chasing fireflies and you had like 20 in your jar and I had one with a broken bulb and then Eric came outside and started teasing us. He said, like, Corey loves Topanga. And you said, yeah, I hate her. That's when I knew. Corey, we were only six. Who cares? Anyways, Topanga goes on to admit that him saying that word scares her because she just didn't really know what it means, which brings Cory to explain what the word means to him, and they share probably another one of the most iconic Cory and Topanga moments, so I'll just play it for you all as well. It's better to just watch it than hear me describe it anyways. All I know is you and I belong together. I mean, I've always been able to, to talk to you, to make you laugh, and I've always, always wanted to take care of you. All right. Topanga, 
I've been completely honest with you. So, I got my jean jacket, so I'll leave you alone. So that's what I love you means? Yeah. Bye. Corey? Uh -huh. I love you, too. I was hoping you did. So now that the two are in I love you territory, that does bring us to our next chapter. So on to number four. So after that big I love you episode, you'd think that the next Corpanga episode would be just as adorable and wholesome, right? Wrong. That's not it at all. <laughs> the next episode we get about the couple is actually our first cheating episode, which is just lovely. So Corey has started to gain attention from other girls at school because of his relationship with Topanga. And so at Topanga homesick, Corey ends up getting invited to this party by this girl that apparently before Topanga would have been way out of his league. The party ends up being this intimate double date moment between Corey and Sean and Missy and this other girl. And the girl goes on to seduce Corey while he is on the phone with Topanga. Then despite Sean's advice to keep the whole thing secret, to Corey's credit, he does come clean to Topanga right away. Topanga yells at him for a bit, but ultimately forgives him as she understands that the kiss didn't mean anything. So tell me, Corey, how did she kiss you? Was it like this? Topanga, do we have to do this here? I need to know, Corey. Or was it more like this? <laughs> no, it wasn't like that. It's the first time anyone's ever kissed me like that before. And Corey Matthews, it's going to be the last time if you ever do anything like that again. And I guess it's also notable that she makes the point to kiss him while she is still sick herself so that he will get sick as punishment. Next up on the toxicity train, we have episode 12 in which Corey is feeling like him and Topanga are in a bit of a rut and that they act too much like an old married couple. So when he goes to another school's dance with Sean and accidentally gets mistaken for him, he doesn't correct them and instead enjoys all the attention he is gaining from all of these girls. But then things end up coming to a head when he attempts to go and flirt with this unknown French girl who turns out to be Topanga. We then come to find out that she was feeling the exact same way as Corey and the two decide to break up. I, I don't want to break up. Because when people break up, they always end up hating each other. Well, we're not other people, Topanga. I <laughs> say we are, but, but we could never hate each other, no matter who we are, right? We are breaking up, aren't we? No, no, we're not. We're never going to break up. Corey, maybe the people who end up hating each other are the people who waited too long to break up. So are you saying you want to break up with me? I'm saying I want to keep caring about you as much as I care about you now. <laughs> then we should break up right away so we can still stay great friends. Which we've always been. Yeah. Yeah, and that'll never change, right? Yeah. So I'll see ya. Yeah. See ya. But it's made quite clear that right after the breakup, the two immediately regret it as they have them both running back to try to reconcile, but then they both just miss the other person. And for those of you keeping score at home, this would be the second time the two of them have broken up if you count the whole I love you incident. A couple episodes later, Corey is trying to move on, but is having a hard time, particularly with kissing the girl that he's dating. He then ends up seeing Topanga kissing another guy at Chubby's, which just adds fuel to the fire because it feels like for him that she's been able to move on a lot easier than he has. He then goes on to freak out and end their friendship, hurting Topanga in the process and creating creating this terrible double standard where he's allowed to move on, but she's not. She confronts him about this by the end of the episode and they reconcile, agreeing to be friends again, which also brings us to, that's right, the end of this chapter. So on to number five. The rest of season three goes on with Corey dating other girls and whatnot, all leading up to episode 21 in which he accidentally calls his date Topanga. Then after a conversation with Sean and another with Eric, he comes to the conclusion that he still loves Topanga and wants her back. It is also revealed in this episode that he has a giant poster of her above his bed, which I believe is only seen in this episode. Eric, look, I'm in a bad way. I need your advice. You love I Topanga and you want her back. That's brilliant. So very insightful. How did you know? <laughs> oh, 
Now, unfortunately for Corey, Topanga is about to go on the school trip to Disney World, and so if he wants to get her back, he's gotta act fast. He tries to tell her how he's been feeling before she leaves, but she ends up expressing the concern that he's been a bit of a player since they broke up, and she just isn't sure if she can trust him anymore. Now, any Boy Meets World fan knows what's up next, that this is a very iconic episode of the series, but nonetheless, Corey is determined to win her back no matter what. And so he decides to go to Florida and grand gesture it by making his intentions clear at Disney World. However, this doesn't end up going as planned as everything he tries just ends up angering Topanga more and he ends up chasing her around the park, but to no avail. All of this changes though when Corey ends up confessing how he's been feeling to this dolphin and Topanga overhears, which brings us to their iconic reconciliation in front of the Epcot ball. I'm not gonna chase you anymore. We'll just go back to being friends or whatever it is you wanna be. Corey, you got on a plane and flew across the country to see me. I know, okay, I'm, I'm embarrassed. I didn't even get the free miles. I mean, you're just in silly outfits. You swam with sharks. I know. There were sharks in there? I mean, it was like you were not gonna give up no matter what. Look, how many times do I have to tell you I'm sorry? No. No. Now it's my turn to tell you I'm sorry. I mean, I never realized these things came from your heart. Until now. Wait, I'm, I'm really confused. So am I. So what's going on? I mean, are, are we friends or what? Or what? What are we doing? I don't know, I mean, we did break up for a reason, right? Yeah, we did. And that reason was... So we could get back together. Now this moment was cute and whatever, don't get me wrong, I love it very much, but I just personally hate whenever a show doesn't want to remind the audience why the ship broke up and so they'll just have both of the characters forget, but I haven't forgotten, I remember exactly why they broke up, the two were in a rut and basically cheating on one another, which I feel like was a solid reason to break up, but nonetheless, the two are back together and happy, which actually brings us to the end of season three, so on to season four. The fourth season starts off with Corey recording messages for Topanga over the summer while he's been away traveling with Eric. The next episode is the Topanga haircutting episode in which Corey is feeling insecure about his appearance and so to make a statement Topanga ends up chopping her hair off but then she proceeds to freak out about this and the two basically switch positions with Topanga being the insecure one and Corey being on the supportive side. The episode goes on with the two being supportive of one another and learning the valuable lesson that they both love one another for what's on the inside. The next Corpanga fight comes in the form of Corey undermining Topanga's babysitting and she gets all paranoid about how they'll be when they're parents one day but it's not really one of their more relevant fights so we can move on. In episode 8 we have our first odd Corpanga intimacy plotline in which Corey tries to seduce Topanga into sleeping with him because he thinks that Sean has slept with someone and so he wants to keep up with him. Topanga is obviously hurt by this but ends up forgiving him by the end of the episode when he says that he's okay to take things at her speed. But now it's sweet 16 time so Topanga has this party coming up and she expresses how important it is to her that Corey be there saying that she will just die if he's not there. But then in comes Frankie who desperately needs the help of Corey and Sean on the same night. Corey tries to attend both functions while lying to Topanga about this but ultimately ends up missing her special dance which was really the main reason why she wanted him there. She ends up seeing the match on the TV catching him in his lie but ends up forgiving him when she sees that he did it with good intentions. And so since Frankie owes him one he ends up arranging for them to share their special dance at the wrestling ring resulting in this very adorable moment. So that was episode 8 and things are pretty stable for the couple after that point. We don't really get many Corpanga plot lines until episode 16 which is a very special episode as it is the Pittsburgh episode so I feel like those deserve their own chapter so let's move on to that. Now, obviously this was a very important episode for the ship, but I feel like oftentimes people forget that this episode started off with Topanga and Sean kissing. And just in case you've forgotten, don't worry, I will show it for you guys. Now we later come to find out that Topanga is moving and got into a fight with her parents about this and Sean saw the fight and then comforted her with a quote unquote innocent kiss. And this might be just me, but I'm just like, if I found out I was moving, I had no say in the matter and I'm clearly very upset about this, my boyfriend's best friend sees me being upset about this and decides to comfort me by kissing me. I just can't see myself reacting in like a positive or even neutral way in regards to like him thinking that was the right way to comfort me. And so I'm just like, what on earth is going on in Sean's head where he's like, yes, this is the perfect way to comfort my best friend's girlfriend when she's clearly upset. Like that just makes no sense to me. That being said though, I am aware of the 
fact that it does all probably just come down to the shock value of it all. The writers just wanted to have this big moment where Corey is left in the dark, and apparently these characters that we trust have this really good explanation for the situation that just seems impossible, and then bam, we find out that she's moving. And then the episode takes a turn to focus on the moving thing because that's apparently the most important conflict here, but I'm just sitting there confused as to why Sean and Topanga were kissing because I felt like that got no resolution. So Corey goes on to break into Topanga's room once again to get an explanation out of her, and then we end up getting this moment. What was that for? I wanted to be the last one to kiss you before I kill you. <laughs> Corey. Topanga, my favorite part about our relationship is that we, we've always been able to talk to each other about anything. So I want you to talk to me. What was that for? I wanted to be the last one to kiss you before I kill you. So Corey goes on to deal with this information and then the two ultimately decide to break up. But like my boyfriend said, while watching this scene, they're just not very good at it. But before I play it, I feel like I just have to mention that this is lucky breakup number three, the couple's third breakup on the show when we're only at season four out of seven. So I just feel like that's such a great sign, isn't it? Look, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it is a new town. It's a new school, it's new people. I mean, pretty soon guys are gonna be lying enough to ask you out. I mean, with, with me not there, why shouldn't you accept? What about you, Corey? I know a million girls who would love to go out with you. Really? Because I was thinking about 10. Corey. <laughs> it's a little tension breaker. So where does that leave us? I'm leaving for Pittsburgh tomorrow night. Yeah. Well, it's a long walk to Pittsburgh. So Topanga is now gone and Corey is trying hard once again to move on. We then find out that they met for the first time when they were eight months old, which is a new development. You see, we first met when we were eight months old in a sandbox. Corey then goes on a depressive spiral without Topanga, going as far as to sit alone in her abandoned bedroom, only leaving once Eric comes to get him. We then find out that Topanga is doing just as bad when she goes as far as to run away from home and travel back to Philly to be with Corey. This brings us to the most aggravating monologue in the entire series as far as I'm concerned, in which Corey maps out their whole relationship timeline, which now apparently begins ever since they were born. Mom, listen, I haven't been together with Topanga for 22 years, but we have been together for 16. Okay, that's a lot longer than most couples have been together. I mean, when we were born, you told me that we used to take walks in our strollers together around the block. When we were two, we were best friends. I mean, I, I knew everything about this girl. I knew her favorite color. I knew her favorite food. And then we got to be six, you know, and, and Eric made fun of me because it wasn't cool to have a best friend that's a girl or to even know a girl. Yeah, and you listen to me, idiot. <laughs> So for the next seven years, I threw dirt at her. I like to call those the lost years. <laughs> Also, this could just be a me thing. Like, I don't know if other fans get as annoyed about the inconsistency in their relationship history as I do. And so if you don't find that to be annoying, then I'm sure that that monologue was a very sweet moment for you. And I'm glad that you enjoyed it. And also, like, don't get me wrong, even though I do have, like, my grievances with it, I do still think that that was a sweet moment as well. But back to our situation at hand, Corey and Topanga are still stuck, not wanting to be separated from one another and feeling as though they're not being heard by any of the adults in this situation. But then in comes Amy, the legend that she is, and she's able to convince Topanga's aunt to let her live with her while she finishes up her senior year of high school, giving Corpanga the happy ending that they so desired. So this next chapter we're calling the conflict chapter because as we've been over before, just having Corey and Topanga being happy and in love in a healthy relationship would be boring. And so we gotta give them some more conflict. This brings us to the last episode of season four, which is also their second intimacy related episode. And I know I just complained about the fact that I'm annoyed that they can't just have these two be happy and in love, but I do feel like this plotline was handled pretty well for the most part. Basically, Corey and Topanga are getting ready to go away together for the weekend, but then last minute Topanga says that her aunt won't let her go. Then while on the trip, Corey gets seduced by this college girl. He tries to 
to leave, but then he can't. I personally feel like he didn't really try that hard, but I digress. This brings him to calling Topanga's aunt's place and finding out that Topanga lied about not being allowed to go, when in fact she didn't even ask her aunt if she could go. We end the episode on a nice scene where the two end up discussing what happened and Topanga explains that it's not really to do with him, but more so her, and how she's worried that she might get carried away with him if she is alone with him for that amount of time, when she would rather wait. So now we're on to season five, and we honestly don't get that much relationship development between these two at the start of the season, besides a few one-off plot lines. In episode eight, we find out that apparently that whole first kiss moment with the lockers in season one wasn't really accurate because apparently their first kiss happened when they were four. Now, 13 years ago, Sean, I was in the sandbox with Topanga, and then she started going after Joey Hutchinson. I don't have to tell you how that made me feel. You were four. Well, you don't have to be five to have feelings. <laughs> anyway, I could have given up, right? I mean, the sandbox was filled with pretty babies, but I didn't give up. So I told Joey that he could fly, and I pointed to the monkey bars. And for that brief moment that Joey was airborne, I told Topanga she had beautiful lips, and I kissed her. Wait a minute. When you were four, you told Topanga she had beautiful lips? And a very cute tush. <laughs> and this is our first real Corpanga episode of the season, if you don't count all of those like flashback alternative timeline episodes, which I personally don't. And it's basically the same plot line as that one episode in season three where the two are feeling like an old married couple. But this time Topanga is aggravated with Corey and the fact that he keeps having them celebrate these pointless anniversaries at this fancy restaurant when she'd rather them just act their own age and go get pretzels or something. This ends up getting resolved and the two of them end up making out on the table. Oh, and also Angela is here now. We're on season five and so she is here, which is great. Welcome Angela. You deserve so much better. But back to Corpanga, so their next conflict comes in the form of Topanga and Angela wanting the guys to go dancing with them, but they don't want to go with them, and so this results in them taking some guys that they work with with them, which makes Sean and Corey jealous. The guys end up deciding to bring these girls that they found at the gym to the restaurant that they work at to try to make them jealous and kind of like reverse Uno card them, but obviously that ends up failing. But this whole mess ends up getting resolved in the very iconic ending where you have all of the boys from the show dancing on stage at this club as an apology. This brings us to the Christmas episode in which Topanga is spending the the holidays with the Matthews and then tension is created when she tries to change all of their Christmas traditions. But I must say the ending of this episode where you have the two of them giving their gifts to one another was very sweet. Um, Merry Christmas. Corey. It's a promise ring. That means that we're gonna be together forever. You mean you wanna be together with me even though we're so different from each other? Yeah. And don't give me a present this year, because you already did. You know, I thought I knew everything about you, but I'm just starting to find out. It's good we're different. Yeah, it is. Open your present. It's a promise ring. And while I could very much so keep this next plot point in this chapter, as it is kind of like the epitome of Corpanga conflict, I feel like it almost deserves a chapter of its own. So on to chapter eight, which is Ski Lodge. So their class is getting ready to go on this ski trip and Cory and Topanga are getting excited at the thought of having this romantic getaway together. But as we all know, Cory gets injured the moment they arrive, leaving him to stay at the ski lodge while Topanga and the gang are out having fun times. So then in comes Lauren, this cute ski lodge employee. The two end up bonding and spending a lot of time together and even flirting with one another. Here, your own piece of the mountain. Keep it as a souvenir. <laughs> Lauren. Thanks, it's been the best day with a mildly sprained ankle I've ever had. And I feel like if things didn't escalate from here, even though we all know that they do, like this would still be cheating as far as I'm concerned. Or maybe not cheating in the general sense, but emotionally cheating for sure. Like he's definitely flirting with her and encouraging the way that she's acting around him, which I just personally feel like is so not cool. And then we have the night where the two of them end up spending the whole night talking to one another without even realizing it. And then to just top it all off, we have them confessing that they like one another as well. So. Lauren, I had a nice time talking to you. So did I. I like you, Corey. Yeah, I like you too. But we can't do anything about that, can we? No. 
And then the avalanche continues when Corey decides to spend his next day at the ski lodge to talk with Lauren, when it's their last day, his ankle was fine and he would have been okay to go ski. He also lies to Topanga about his ankle not being okay so that he can do this and not feel guilty about it. And then when he does talk to Lauren, the two of them end up kissing. And so now he's even deeper in this hole that he's created. And just like the last time he cheated on Topanga, Sean is all for keeping this a secret from her. But instead of them having any sort of consistency with Corey's character and having him react the same way he did previously when he was faced with this dilemma, or maybe that's not even it. Maybe it's just the fact that even Corey himself knows that the situation is much worse than the last time he cheated on her. Nonetheless, when he goes to talk to Topanga and is given the perfect opportunity to come clean about everything, he still decides to omit the kiss. And the fact that they both confess their feelings for one another, which I personally feel like was even worse, but maybe that's just me. Corey, it's okay for you to talk to an interesting person, but it's not okay that you lied to me. I know. I shouldn't lie to someone I love more than anything. I love you too. <sighs> Did anything else happen between you? <laughs> what? Did anything else happen between you? No, nothing. And so this brings us to part two in which Topanga finds a letter that Lauren wrote for Corey. She reads it and then confronts him about it. And then the rumor starts to spread about the two breaking up. And even though I am very mad at Corey and I feel like he deserves this 100%, still just like seeing him alone at their Valentine's Day spot did pull at my heartstrings a little bit, I will admit. But enough of the Corey sympathy onto the next episode in which Sean convinces Topanga to go and talk to Corey at Chubby's. But then unfortunately, Lauren gets there first. Topanga gives Corey the opportunity to take the time he needs with Lauren and Corey takes it. So him and Lauren and go on a date and the chemistry is honestly undeniable. The jacket moment is a big one for Corey, which just makes me feel like maybe the two are honestly more compatible intimacy wise as well. But then after a conversation with Sean, Corey is able to come to the conclusion that he likes Lauren, but Topanga is the one that he can't live without. So the two of them meet and Corey is able to explain how he's been feeling, how he knows now just how unwavering his feelings are for her. Unfortunately for Corey though, this is when Topanga finally decides to end things as she feels as though she never had to test her feelings for him and she wishes that he didn't have to either. So for those of you keeping track at home. Yes, this is breakup number four. I'm, I'm so sorry. I forgive you. I forgive you for lying at the lodge. I forgive you for kissing her. And I forgive you for the letter, which I read. I know how intimately she felt about you. But that you needed to see her to test how you felt about me. I don't forgive no. you for that, Corey. No! You told me to see her, Topanga! You told me to see how I felt! And you listened. And then after a break for one of the best Boy Meets World episodes of all time, and then there was Sean, we move on to an episode where Corey is once again a mess post breakup. He is feeling as though that once again, Topanga was able to move on without a problem, whereas he is really struggling. But then this time it ends up resulting in him finding comfort in alcoholism at a party. This brings us to episode 20, which starts off with another great Corpanga backstory. I'm proud of you, Corey. We have been here for a full minute and you have not once mentioned Topanga. I'll never forget the first time I saw her, Sean. Oh, here we go. <laughs> I was over there on the monkey bars, crying because I didn't know how to get down. But she gave me the courage to jump. I mean, I tore some cartilage, sure. But I knew, Shawnee that I had found my playground mate for life. <laughs> so now these two have known each other since they were babies, but also the first time they met, they were on monkey bars, but also like they might've also met that one time in class. So like, I don't know, maybe they're just so in love that they're just like able to surpass all of space and time. Moving on though, the show decides that they need to put Topanga through the same thing that Corey went through because that's the only way to make sure that the audience doesn't hate them together. Even though this doesn't really make sense because Topanga made it very clear that she had numerous opportunities to test how she feels for Corey and she's never had to. Nonetheless, she goes on to meet this creepy guy at the Van Gogh exhibit. They talk all about the paintings and he invites her out to dinner. This prompts Topanga to bring Corey to the same exhibit and get his opinion on the paintings, which results in Corey giving this really great speech about the kiss that honestly, like I hate to say it, but it makes me want to forgive him. Don't tell me how I feel about you. Okay, I know how I feel about you. And she kissed me. Oh, and you moved away? What did you do to stop her? Nothing, nothing. 
I said, kiss me, baby sweetie. Kill the relationship with a person I care about more than anything and make me miserable for the rest of my horrible life. That's what I said. Her kiss meant nothing to me. And you were right. Those kind of things do not happen for no reason. They happen to teach you something. And I know now that I will never, ever love anybody more than I love you. There's also a great line after this moment where Topanga calls the painting a masterpiece and Corey says that they're the masterpiece, which is just such a great moment, but it doesn't matter because Topanga already had it in her mind that she was only going to forgive him if he gave the same answer that the creepy boy did. So she goes out to dinner with this other guy, they kiss, and this apparently brings her to the conclusion that there is no one else in the world for her besides Corey, and there never will be. The two of them then go on to meet at the monkey bars, which is where they first met, if you'll recall from earlier in this episode, and then they go on to twist what Topanga's point was before, saying that she just couldn't understand how he could kiss someone and have it not mean anything when that was never something Topanga expressed a problem with like she was able to understand that concept back in season three but anyways they kiss and get back together yay and then in the following episode Sean accidentally breaks up the couple once again in an attempt to get them back together because he was kept in the dark about them getting back together in the first place and so they pretended to be broken up but then he ends up breaking them up again for real but then after seeing Corey's parents fighting they learn that couples can fight without having to break up which I think was another attempt at them trying to excuse the events of Ski Lodge but that's just my take on things so now that the show has really put these two through it, that does wrap up this chapter as well. So on to chapter nine. So chapter nine, we're calling Let's Get Married because right after a big cheating scandal, that's the logical thing to do, right? Let's start off with prom night. So apparently Cory and Topanga have discussed that they will be sleeping together at prom if the night goes absolutely perfect. And so Cory, while talking to Sean, expresses the fact that he will try to do everything in his power to make sure that everything goes exactly perfectly right so that he can sleep with her. So I guess this would be the show's fourth intimacy-based plotline overall, but second weird one. And I of course mean weird in regards to Cory and his behavior, not Topanga's. I have no problems at all with her wanting to wait and it honestly makes sense to me that she would want to as they are both so young. My problem is Corey's whole behavior in regards to that fact. It's the same stuff that we saw in that one episode in season four and it just continues from here. It's the whole joking about Corey being deprived and desperate that I just honestly feel like was really disrespectful to Topanga and her wishes. And it just honestly makes me feel that maybe these two just weren't compatible in that department, but maybe that's just me. Anyways, they decide to get a hotel room together, but they ultimately end up deciding not to go through with it because they felt as though they were forcing it and that the timing wasn't right and instead decide to go back down downstairs and enjoy their prom. Moving on to the finale, Topanga gets into Yale but decides to turn it down to be with Corey and then proposes to him in the middle of their graduation. Mr. Feeney said I should go to Yale unless I have a really good reason not to. Well, there isn't any good reason. Actually, there is. Myra Zinkerman. Corey. What? Ladies and gentlemen, the John Adams High School class of 1998. Will you marry me? Anyways, Corey goes on to accept this marriage proposal only after it is hinted to him that they will get to sleep together on their honeymoon. Plus, I want to have time for our honeymoon before college starts. A honeymoon, huh? Mm-hmm. And on this honeymoon, you and I, we, we probably- Oh, there's a good chance, yeah. <laughs> So he says yes, but he wants to keep the whole thing a secret because he knows how everyone will react, which honestly should have been the first red flag. Then of course, Corey's parents find out about this and then all hell breaks loose. So now that the cat is out of the bag and everyone, minus Sean, is very against the idea of these two children getting married, this just makes Corey even more game for the idea. So the two of them go off to elope and Topanga brings up this excellent point as to what's gonna happen once they're both in college and they see everyone else dating and having fun, like then what? And this man has the audacity to say that it didn't face him in high school, so it won't face him then. When like, Yes, it did. This man cheated on her, what, three times? I believe it was three times if we count that one time when that college girl was sucking on his ear, but nonetheless, apparently we're just gonna forget about that now because they're getting married and so who cares? So now we're at the altar and Topanga says no because she wants a real wedding. This angers Corey because it ruins the big dramatic moment that he wanted, but then he goes on to agree that she did the right thing and that marriage should be a celebration and not a secret. So the couple comes home, everyone thinks that they got married and when the time comes for Amy to give her speech, she just can't pretend that she is in support of them getting married at this age and ends up asking Topanga why she couldn't have just gone to Yale. Obviously this leads to Corey getting very upset with his mom and we end up getting this moment. How could you say that to her? I'm sorry. No, you're sorry. So for 15 years, you've been lying to me? No. No, you've been lying to me about how you feel about us and you've been lying to me about how you feel about her. I want what I believe is best for you, Corey. And What's best for us, mom, is for you to trust us. I love her, all right? I will always love her. And you know something else? We didn't get married because she wanted you to be there. 
So Amy then somehow comes to the conclusion that she's actually just sad about Topanga taking her place in Corey's life and not the fact that they're way too young to get married and then they end up working things out. Which is nice and whatever, but I'm just like, this isn't the first time that the show has done this, where they pretended like this was the original issue when it wasn't, but they can't talk about the original issue because they don't know how to resolve it and so they just make up their own and it makes no sense and it bugs me. Anyways, Corey then proposes and they agree to get married once they're ready. We've been together our entire lives and you know that I, I love you more than anything in the world. Will you marry me? Yes, Corey. Yes, I will. So now that this whole marriage thing is on hold for a hot minute, it's time for the gang to experience college life. So that brings us to chapter 10. Double digits, baby. Let's go. <laughs> So our first Corey and Topanga college plotline happens in episode six when Topanga and Sean kiss for a promotional video and Corey throws a hissy fit, which I honestly feel like is warranted considering these two characters' history and the fact that they have kissed before and that was never resolved. We then have this great scene with Corey watching the tape over and over again and yelling for Topanga. And I feel like this is a great example as to how basically from season five on, Corey is now this like comedic buffoon who is basically just like Topanga's himbo, which is also probably why I just find shipping them in the later seasons just like so much easier than in the middle. And then we of course have the under pants moment, which is just way too iconic not to include. Well, it's probably no surprise to you that I've had a long, hard night and a lot of time to think. And I know that the two of you are thinking that the crazy little man would dwell and stew and blow all this horribly out of proportion. <laughs> but I want you to know that I've worked through it. I'm fine. And I am a happy, healthy Corey. <laughs> and I just want to ask one thing. What's this? <laughs> no, Corey, we were just... Underpants. <laughs> I always sleep like this. Underpants! Oh, here we go. Corey then goes on to force the two out on a date while he's still spiraling, but then Angela is then able to help him see that the kiss didn't mean anything because they don't love each other like Corey and Topanga do. So it's basically the same lesson that we've learned twice now. No, I think it's three times. <laughs> but overall, I am sort of grateful for this because it does offer some sort of conclusion to the kiss from season four. The following episode is a very serious one and probably another one of the best episodes in the entire series. Basically, one of their teachers makes a move on Topanga in their dorm room, which left her feeling very uncomfortable and violated. And then Corey ends up hitting him once he confesses to it. It's honestly just such a great episode. And while it really isn't necessarily about the couple, I just had to highlight it because I do admire how Corey reacted here. Like, obviously I don't condone violence, but I also just like don't blame him for having that reaction. Action. In the next episode, we find out that Corey also wanted an engagement ring, but it's creating some complications for him when he's trying to hang out with Sean and this new group of friends that he has. These guys basically suck and continue to hassle Corey about his relationship, which brings him to taking his ring off while at the like Boy Meets World version of Hooters. Topanga finds out about this and is obviously hurt, and so she gives him the ultimatum of he can either continue to wear the ring or it's over. Now this next moment, I can't play for you all as it is music related, and so if I were to play it, I would get in trouble, but this video just wouldn't be complete without me mentioning mentioning the episode where they go to karaoke and perform War together. It is one of my personal favorite moments from the entire series. On to episode 14 in which the two lose to Rachel and Eric during a couples game and so they decide to live with one another for a few days to get to know each other better. This results in another weird intimacy moment where Corey interprets this as meaning that Topanga wants to sleep with him and then he gets annoyed when she shuts him down. But now it's Valentine's Day and the two end up getting into a fight because they wanted to spend the day doing different things. And then tensions increase once Amy is at the hospital giving birth to Josh and Topanga gets upset with Corey because she feels as though he's focusing more on them and their relationship than the birth of his brother. Then once Josh is born, he has a respiratory infection, which just leads to more complications with the couple because Corey is trying to find comfort in their relationship, but Topanga sees this as him hiding behind it. He rebuttals by saying that he doesn't like the fact that she's not Topanga anymore, referencing how she used to act in the first season. And then this ends up bringing us to this confession from Topanga. I remember this one time, I was trying to help Corey with this poem we had for school. Not just the words of it, but the essence behind it. I went over to his house. He read the poem and I danced all around his kitchen. And I put lipstick all over my face. And why do we remember that story so well? Because I always thought that was the moment he fell in love with me. 
And I feel like this is an interesting moment because if I recall, Cory first fell in love with Topanga when they were like chasing fireflies in the backyard, I think it was. I even remember him recalling this moment to Topanga, but I guess she forgot. Anyways, back at the hospital, Topanga feels as though she doesn't know what to do to make things better for Cory, but then she doesn't have to because Sean shows up and it's clear that he's what he needed in that moment. The episode ends with a reference back to their first episode together and Topanga thanks Cory for reminding her as to who she used to be. Would you rather I was like the old strange Topanga? Well, no, it's, it's not like I, I, I don't like the new strange Topanga. I, I mean, it's important for us to grow, but I just, I don't want to lose what's so special about you. You never will. Because I'm in your memories. And you will always be here to remind me. Use a mirror, babe. <laughs> A couple episodes later, the duo tries a stab at total honesty after Topanga using Cory's razor completely grosses him out. She explains that she wants to be so close with him that they share absolutely everything, and Cory is disgusted by this because he doesn't want to have to share things like his toothbrush with her. Which honestly, like this sounded fair to me, and I wish Topanga would have respected this boundary. Instead, Cory says that he feels like it's unfair that she wants to share everything with him when she won't even show him her behind, and so she ends up showing him her butt, and then that's the resolution of this episode. But now that we've had a fun season of college shenanigans, it's time to get serious and so that means that the wedding topic is back on the table so with that narrative shift it's on to chapter 11. So now we're on to the finale of season six and we find out that Corey is scared that once they get married, everything will change and he's having nightmares about it. We then come to find out that Topanga's parents are getting a divorce, which brings Corey to push the date of their wedding back. This brings us to the first episode of the seventh season, which also brings us to our sixth Corpanga breakup. It's just too painful to think about you and I ending up like my parents. Our relationship has to be over, sorry. So Cory decides that to get Topanga back, he has to get her parents back together, and so he tries to do this, but then finds out that the reason why they broke up is because Topanga's dad cheated and is in love with someone else. And then at the end of the episode, he has a conversation with Topanga about her parents, and one thing I really liked about this conversation is that he decides to keep what he learned to himself. I feel like this was a great decision on his part because it spares Topanga's feelings, and I also feel like it wasn't his information to share. Two episodes go by, and then we have Topanga being sad after seeing Cory with another girl. This brings her to having a conversation with her mom where she helps her see that she shouldn't let her fear of the future stop her from enjoying the present. So Cory and Topanga get back together and the wedding is back on. Cory, if something bad happens to us someday, it could never change what we have now. What we've always had, because you're right, Cory. Love is real and we have to do everything we can to keep it alive. Well, you really haven't been doing that, dear. <laughs> what can I do to make it up to you? You could move your knee. Sorry. Wherever life takes us, I want it to be with you. Forever. Or until tomorrow. Two episodes go by and then we have the iconic wedding planning episode, along with a joke about just how sexually frustrated Corey is due to their lack of intimacy, which once again, is apparently not a red flag to anybody else. But of course, chaos then continues as the couple tries to plan their wedding, including even a proposal from Eric. But the episode ultimately ends with the couple deciding to have the wedding at the Matthews house. But as we all know, that is when Eric gets involved and they end up having their wedding at this very fancy hotel. Ever since I was young, I never really understood anything about the world and I never understood anything that happened in my life the only thing that ever made sense to me was you and how I felt about you that's all I've ever known and that's enough that's enough for me for the rest of my life to bang up Following the ceremony, Eric gifts the couple with a key to the honeymoon suite and they decide to ditch the reception to go and sleep together. But unfortunately, they don't actually get the chance to do the deed as this is when the police come and arrest them because Eric's scheme of stealing another couple's wedding comes to light. This brings us to their honeymoon where the couple is finally able to have sex. How lovely. And it's also the moment where they decide that they'd rather just stay at this resort forever than go home. But they then go on to learn the valuable lesson that true paradise is just being surrounded by the people that you love. Aww, how cute. <laughs> but y'all know what that means, the honeymoon's over, which means this chapter is as well. So on to chapter 12, which is actually our final Corpanga chapter. Can you believe it? I can't. I feel like I've been sitting here for hours. I do not remember a time in which I was not sitting here. <laughs> when this boy meets well, 
So the couple has just returned home from their honeymoon and they come to find out that they now have no place to stay. They go on to move into the marriage dorms, but then soon come to find out that the living conditions there are less than ideal, to put it lightly. All of this brings us to an incredible scene between Corey and his dad that I just feel like I wanna to try to include as much as I possibly can in this video because it's one of my personal favorite moments from the series overall. I don't know what it is. Actually, I do know what it is. It's just so good and the acting is 10 out of 10 and it's such a realistic situation that I love. And so I'm gonna just play it for you guys. Corey, I'm not coming around. I can't help you the way you want me to and I'm not going to. Hey, we're drowning here. You are not drowning. Well, what do you call living in an awful dorm with no money and the washing machine's broken in the laundry room and there's some kind of soup coming out of the faucet? Marriage, I call it marriage. Okay, well, well it's hard, okay? It, it, it's just hard, Dad. And you want me to make it not so hard. You're supposed to do that for I me. can't. Well, then what good are you? Hey, you made a choice. You decided that you were old enough to get married. You decided to take on the responsibility of a new life because you believed you could handle it. And this family supported that decision after we told you that it was going to be very difficult. What, did you think we were kidding? Did you go into this marriage thinking you were just going to play house and we were gonna bail you out of trouble? Corey, this is your life. Deal with your life. On to the next episode where Sean helps them see that the place that they're living in isn't really as bad as it seems and they just have to put a little work into it to make it livable. And this ends up really helping them lift their spirits and we get this just like absolutely adorable moment. All right, now before I go under there, I gotta tell you, whatever you do, it's very important that you remember that you do not turn on the wire! Sorry, did something bad happen? <laughs> you tell me. Corey, I am so sorry. Okay, you gotta hug me. No! Hug me! No, get away from me, Swamp Thing! Oh, Swamp Thing wants the booty! After me, I must warn the village. No, no, I'm taking you back to the swamp to do things! Aww. Wouldn't you know it? Swamp Thing very flustrated. <laughs> In the following episode, we see Corey just like having a blast fixing things in their apartment, but Topanga doesn't really agree with all of his tastes. She chooses to stay quiet about this though, as she doesn't want to rain on his parade. But as we all know, these two have known each other ever since they came out of the womb. And so he can tell whenever she's not happy with something and decides to change things more to her liking. A few episodes go by and then Corey and Topanga get their first real jobs. Corey is a magazine salesman over the phone and Topanga is like, I think an intern, I believe for like this prestigious fashion company. This leads them to having this like huge fight in in front of all of their friends, which is arguably their worst fight to date. Maybe I have to kiss Judy's tushy because you can't sell one stinking magazine. Okay, that's it, yeah. <laughs> what did you just say? I just said that you haven't been doing all that No, well with no, your no, sales. that is not what you said. You said I'm a loser, Topanga. I know you said it because I heard it. I heard it from your big mouth. Oh, I have a big mouth yeah. now. You can't even play solitaire, imbecile. Oh. Did you hear that okay from my big mouth? You know what, Topanga, I used to be able to. I used to be able to do a lot of things before I married you. Congratulations, you've killed my spirit. So the episode ends with a time-lapse sort of discussion between the two in which Topanga says that this is their first fight, which like, listen, I'm aware that this show is very big on being inconsistent, but I feel like they're not fooling anybody with that. Like we all know that's not even remotely true. I mean, I guess she could be referring to this being like their first fight as a married couple, but like still that just bugged me. And speaking of fights, they go on to have another one in the lose one friend, lose all friends, lose yourself episode. But I personally feel like that one's not as relevant and I'm tired. And so we're just gonna move on to the next arc. Getting to the end of the season and the end of the series for that matter, in their next episode, Corey gets the idea that Topanga might be pregnant and then the rumor starts to spread. Corey then comes to find out that Topanga was actually having body image issues and that she was on a diet, not pregnant. And this results in a really great moment where all of her friends help her feel better and Corey and Topanga share a moment as well. Look, you're the most stunningly beautiful woman I've ever seen. That's why I married you. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, I love everything about you. And that's never gonna change. 
And then we have another episode in which Cory and Topanga are worried about being that old married couple amongst their friends. And I mean, I feel like you could turn this into a drinking game at this point, or maybe not. There's, there was only three in total, but still, I feel like that was three too many. Anyways, the two end up hosting this dinner party, but nobody shows up. And so they end up having this steamy food fight instead. And while this is basically the same plot line we've seen a few times now, one thing I did like about this episode is the resolution and the fact that they are finally just like happy and content with doing what they like to do. So all this brings us to our series finale in which they decided to give us a bit more of a resolution to the Yale plot line which I personally really appreciated. We find out that Cory wasn't the only reason that Topanga decided to stay and not go to Yale and that she was actually scared and so staying with Cory was the easier choice, which definitely makes sense and was kind of a no-brainer, but that's okay. <laughs> and so now she has this internship opportunity at NYU, which she wants to turn down as well. But Cory can see, along with the help of Feeny, that she's clearly just playing it safe instead of going and fulfilling her dreams. So the series ends with the two deciding to move to New York so that Topanga can grow. And why do I feel like I'm about to cry right now? Like I'm not even watching the show and I'm getting emotional. It's just such a long, story that you honestly feel like is never going to end and it's such a happy ending and I love that he's putting her first and just all of that it just makes me emotional I guess what if I fail well if, if you fail then I'll I'll see this girl who took a real risk you know who who left the world she was used to with great courage and she danced the dance you know and if you fail I think there's a real chance I'll love you even more And so that, my friends, is where we end the beautiful love story of Cory and Topanga. And yeah, I'm honestly very happy that that was the note that they decided to end on because I personally feel like it was a very healthy decision. And I just like seeing Cory putting Topanga above his own for once. I also just want to reiterate now that we've gone over absolutely everything that I do not hate this ship by any means. And I do genuinely feel as though there was a lot of good in their story as well. This show was all about teaching lessons and Cory was the main character. And so that meant oftentimes to have that lesson being taught, Cory just had to like mess up a bunch and learn from it. I also think it's important to to note that consuming TV in that era is just so incredibly different than it is now. Oftentimes after the premiere of an episode, you weren't able to easily go back and rewatch it unless you happened to record it or catch it on a rerun. And so consistency and having a continuative narrative just wasn't as important at the time because people weren't sitting down and binging a whole series from start to finish. And so obviously as a fan, I had a blast at tallying up all of their inconsistencies, but I'm also very aware as to why they were there to begin with. But I wanna know how you guys feel about Cory and Topanga and their relationship arc after having me lay it all out for you? Were they as good as you remember? Do you feel like they're toxic? Let me know in the comments down below. I can't wait to read all about it. Anyways, Kater Tots, I believe that is all I have to say for today. So I hope you'll have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. I also feel like, I don't know, I would love to cover Sean and Angela, but I definitely need a few more months to do that because I can't really comprehend spending any more time on a video in regards to Boy Meets World, but just give me a couple months and I totally will be able to do that. Um, But yeah, once again, as I say at the end of all of these videos, let me know which ship you'd like to see me cover next because I kind of feel like it should be Casey and Brett, but I don't know. I'm open to others as well. Let me know in the comments. This video should be going up on Christmas Eve. So for those of you who celebrate Merry Christmas, I hope you guys have a wonderful holiday season and I love you all very, very much. Um, I actually have to go because I'm driving back home in the morning and it's getting kind of late. So that's all for me. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching my channel. It really means a lot and I hope you all have a great holiday and new year. Even though I just said that, I just want to make that very clear. I hope you guys have a great time. Okay. <laughs> I love you all. Bye. Bye, 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 bye.